thermal bog.
so connected to this camera. The only piece that's stuck right now is this piece here. It's like it's like a tube and it goes across. That's what's making it not come apart. It's just the tiniest looking tube. Pull it off. Oh, there we go. Parts are falling out. Wow, these screws just fell off on their own. Or they were stuck in there. Look at that. Old big piece just fell off. Alright, we'll put it in there. And then this big piece, it's a middle piece. It's pretty cool. And there's a ton of more pieces. There's an O ring. There's another O ring. It's part of the gasket. Looks like a float right there. There. Tiniest looking screw. Over there. This little piece of gasket sitting there. Small rings. There we go. Pop, I'm done taking it apart. Pop, I'm done. I'm done taking it apart. All right, let's see how you did, Jacoby. Let's see here. Okay. Peel the gaskets off there in a second. Now, you got everything out of here. Oh. oh, we got a needle in the seat that just fell out. Oh, okay, I see you got, okay, this is a float. You, you got one float out. Yep. Right there. All right. Now, this float here, see this little pin? Mm -hmm. That little pin slides out. Float comes out. Mm -hmm. And then the other needle in the seat comes out. Now, this is basically a part. Mm-hmm. These weren't real tight either. No. Okay, so so we'll have to get the tool and get this out right here. And then there's a plunger that comes out. You'll see that when we get it there. Here is our main body. This is why it's called a thermo quad. Thermo meaning temperature. Mm -hmm. Quad meaning what? Core. So what's that mean then? means it's a temperature quad. Yep. Four Does barrel? Mean, yep, four barrel. All right, now one of the things to look for when you look at one of these carburetors, that's common issue apparently. Now, I don't run into it very often, but these little plugs right here, they're glued on, and I've seen them fall apart. You see those little plugs right there? Mm -hmm. See that little white line going around? That's glue. And they've come apart. Now, this one's good. So, I don't see a problem. Down here, mm -hmm. these are your main jets. So, let's see if we can get those out. Here we go. Man, those were tough. They are tight. Now, these are your primary main jets. Now these really wouldn't have to come out, but we're going to get them out of the way anyway. As long as they're perfectly clear, 
in good shape. Sure. Okay, so that's taking apart the thermoquad. You did a really good job. You got everything out. You had the one float and the, the seats. I never told you about the seats. But you got everything out. And did this tube give you some trouble? Yeah. It, 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 it was like, I was like, come on, get off. And then eventually rip. Yeah, see the gasket is underneath it. Yeah. So if the gasket gets stuck to the body here and you try to pull this up, that gasket goes, no, I ain't letting you go. Now when we go to put it together, we'll have to pop the tube off and take care of all that. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's good. So we'll take this and we'll stick it in some cleaner and boil it, clean it up, and uh, make this thing run again. We have one other thing that needs to come out, Jacob. Mm -hmm. Right here is your accelerator pump nozzles. Oh. And it is really, 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 really not wanting to come out. So let's get, I'll, I'll pull, I'll go ahead and pull this out and I'll show it to you. So this nozzle has a little weight with the needle. Mm -hmm. That little weight in the needle is a check valve. And this is an important piece right here when we go to put this. Now this is similar to the Holly in the sense that these little nozzles are sized. And that size can adjust out a bog or a hesitation under a quick acceleration especially okay well before we put this in there we've got to take this apart so we'll get that done right now Here we go. Fall right out. Yep. Alright. Seems cool. Yep. Okay, so this is your plunger for your accelerator pump. And uh, some kits only give you this new seal right here. But this is a spring that goes in there that shoves it actually actually puts fuel in. And this is the check valve here. That's the piece that encapsulates it. One other thing here. These are the secondary main jets. You see these big pieces of brass? Yeah. I don't know what size wrench they take, but I'm going to go ahead and use this pair of pliers and get them out of here. And we probably don't need to take these out. In fact, we may not because they are really super tight in there and I really don't want them to break off or do anything, something silly. Okay, one came out. For a jet that's big. Yeah. Jets in the Barracuda are full that big. They're really tiny. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty tiny. Yeah, this one's huge. There's the other one. All right, so that's basically a part. We're going to pull this little rubber thing out right here. Mm -hmm. And we'll have to take this little plastic line off. Mm -hmm. And there we go with that. There's our little plastic line. And that's as far as we're going to disassemble it. Now, we'll go ahead and take this piece off, too. There's no reason to have that on there. You know, we'll put it back on, but we'll take that off. But anyhow, there's your thermoquad taken apart. So we'll get it into the dip and clean it up. And you and me will get back together and put it back together. Chilly out here.
Look at that. Just take these and just kind of spread them out. We've got to be careful not to blow them off our tray, though. These are some of the parts that we didn't dip. This falls to the tray, so I left it out and a little screw and some different things here. Obviously a rubber hose. We don't want to soak this diaphragm. These are the parts that we dipped. And they don't look like they did a good job, but they're clean. It's just, you know, like stained. Yeah. All the mung is off of them. Okay, so. This got a washer right here that's trying to fall out. So I'm gonna get that through. There we go. See that washer? Yeah. All right. Now these have been dipped, and uh, that dip doesn't clean as good as some stuff that I've had before. So I'm gonna have to change brands. But anyway, there's this. So this is the part that I like to start with here. This part of the carburetor, and I always start with the, the seats, okay? Needle and seats. There's a little gasket that goes down inside there. So make sure you put that little gasket in. And then you screw these down. It's actually a little metal, like a washer that's rubber coated. I already stuck them down there to make sure they're the right size, and uh, they were the right size, so they're too hard to pull back out, and I'm not going to do that. Um, you really kind of need to get a wide screwdriver for doing these seats. Hmm. Could probably even make a tool for it, I don't know. these are good and snug in here I have seen these come loose while the car was going down the road now look back the little red Express when I was driving it home the seat came loose and it starts to back off well, when the seat comes loose fuel leaks around it so eventually the car floods but that seat sets how high this float is sitting and so if the seat starts coming out the float starts going down well, it doesn't fill the carburetor all the way up. And pretty soon it holds the carburetor, the, the fuel from coming in. And a car starts running like garbage, like you're running out of gas. Well, you are running out of gas, but the fuel pump and everything is good. You just can't get fuel into the carburetor because the seat is falling out. So then after it idles for a few minutes, pretty soon the fuel leaking around the outside pretty soon fills up and floods it. And then it goes the opposite direction, like too much fuel. So, make sure them seats are in there good with their little gaskets. Alright, Jacob, so these are the other side of the air bleed, and they pop out right there, that little hole. So, you got to make sure that those holes are clear. It's also the emulsification tube for the secondaries. This is the jet for the secondaries. It's a 5 16 wrench, or you can use the trusty old crescent wrench. This, this tends to get everything. When you get a rebuild kit, you don't get these, you know, these, the jets, those pieces you always use again. 
Okay. Um. In this gasket, there's basically two two different gaskets. You got the bigger thermal quad has a bigger hole. This is the bigger one. This is, I think, an 850. I'm not sure. In any case, the bigger one has. There's a smaller one, smaller hole on the primary. Also, there's a difference between the way the gasket fits around here. Just make sure you pick the right one. Okay. Then we have our little accelerator pump tube. What happened to our little tube? There it is. Got this little tube. It plugs in here and goes to there. Okay. Then you have our accelerator pump, which is here, it's over the top, and it just needs to be smacked on, so you just kind of got to get it hit on there, and then gently smack it on there. Accelerator pump. So we have our seat. I mean our needle. Needle, not seat. Now this is this is one of the reasons why I like the thermal quad better than the Rochester. Mm -hmm. Is it has two needling seats. So that gives us twice the amount of area for fuel to flow into the carburetor. This little nail looking thing goes in there. Goes through there? Yeah. To hook the. And I always do it from. Football. I always go from this direction. Alright, so the float's on there. There's a little tab over here that sits on the seat. Mm -hmm. And that determines how high this float should be. That line should be level. There's a line on the float. Can you see that? Yeah. That line should be level with the body of the carburetor. Level is in. The body is here and the float is here. Not like this, but flat. So... You take this, you take a screwdriver and you just get in there and gently bend that little tab. That's all you do. Okay. That's our top half of our carburetor. Now, this piece right here, mm -hmm. not all thermal quads have them. There's a slot that they fit in. Mm -hmm. They all have that slot, but for some reason, not every carburetor I've ever taken apart has this in it. So I don't know why some do and some don't. Just make sure you put it in if you take it out. Now, here's our primary jet. Mm -hmm. And it goes down here. And with these... I've seen these muscle-bound guys get in here and try to rebuild one of these. Yeah. And they'll get in here and over-tighten this. Mm -hmm. Now that jet's made out of brass and it goes into a little brass piece down in there that it threads into. Mm -hmm. I've seen them over-tighten it to the point that the brass breaks loose from the, the phenolic plastic. So it does not need to be that tight. Just make sure it's tight enough not to vibrate out. 
This is very important. There's two O-rings mm -hmm. that go to the bottom in here. You got to make sure that they are in there. If you do not put those in there, mm -hmm. this thing will run really rich and doodoo-ish. They seat against here and they seal off this piece to the plastic body. You see the fuel comes through that jet, goes through this little well down here. That's another thing on these carburetors, these are glued on. Make sure that they're not falling off. But anyhow, it seals it up from here to here, through here, where the fuel sprays out of the on the primary side. seen with these before is the factory there's some metal tabs and things on here that can be bent mm -hmm. and the factory will set it up so when this primary gets all the way open the secondary is only about there so I think they did it on purpose to basically make a smaller carburetor out of it I think now what to do to fix that is you have to take, there's a metal tab right here, and you have to bend that metal tab. And in this case, I had to bend the tab. You can see how it's bent that way a little bit mm -hmm. towards the back of the carburetor, towards the sear. See how it's bent a little, it's not flat. Mm -hmm. And that way it catches it sooner and makes the secondaries go wide open. So watch for that when you do one of these. Okay. Alright. Again, there are two different size, basically two different size gaskets. One with a smaller primary in it. So you want to make sure that you have the, the one with the right size primary hole. One thing here, this has got a little cam in it. Mm -hmm. And this little cam right here moves a I don't know what I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a foot it is. this right here and what it does is these carburetors it sits on here like this so when you hit the gas see how it moves mm -hmm. how it's lifting up yeah when you hit the gas it's pushing against this t-shaped bar and the t-shaped bar is sitting here whoops the t-shaped bar is in the carburetor sitting on this little tab mm -hmm. somewhere about there so when you hit the gas it pushes this up Mm -hmm. Well, on the end of this T-shaped bar is these little tapered metering rods, and they go down into the jet. So the further down this goes, the leaner it gets. The further up it goes, the richer it gets. So this makes sure, this is basically the power valve, and mm -hmm. so this makes sure that the power valve is open to a certain point. So make sure you put this in. Mm -hmm before you put the carburetor top on. And there's a couple of rods that are in here that you gotta make sure are all in the right place. This is gonna go down here. Make sure this goes between this V-shaped piece. Um, everything's looking good there, so we're gonna go ahead and put a couple of screws in. Just so it'll stay together. Now 
this big thick spring here. Mm -hmm. It goes to your idle mixture. Sure. Now these screws should be somewhere about around one and a half to two and a half turns out. Mm -hmm. But these carburetors were set up very lean from the factory. Mm -hmm. And so I like to just go start, I don't start off with a turn and a half, I go two, two and a half turns every time. Alright, so what you do is you turn this until it just touches and stops, you don't force it. Then you back it out, two and a half turns. Alright, so that's two and a half turns. Now, there's our accelerator pump right here. Still work? Yep. And you see this little guy right here? Mm hmm. This is like a check valve for our accelerator pump. Mm hmm. And I like to put it in into the hole. See, there's two holes. Down there, see down there? The fat one is where this one goes, so you stick it in there. Okay, so it's in there. And then I like to take a screw mm -hmm. right over the top of it. And I like to just tap it gently. And that makes sure that where it seats is tapered exactly the same. There's no funny stuff because if it leaks, it makes a big hesitation when you go to take off. Okay, so then we put our, you put your new gasket in and you drop your nozzles in there. You ready? Okay. Accelerator pump. I mean, the accelerator pump nozzle. Shine down the hole there. All right. Now, do you remember these, Jacob, down here? Don't forget to put those in. Remember, you couldn't find them when we took it apart? Yeah. You got to make sure you drop those in and get those tightened up. Now, when I'm working on tuning these carburetors, mm -hmm. I only put these four screws in. These, this one, these two, and this one. Because when you tune this, you got to pull this top back off. And to pull the top back off, I don't want to take 75 screws out. And I want just the screws that are going to go in there and force this thing to seal up correctly. And once it's sealed up correctly, we can do our adjusting and our tuning. And then when we're done making all of our adjustments, then we can put the rest of our screws in. Okay. Now there's other pieces of linkage like this one here. Mm -hmm. It goes to here, okay? Mm -hmm. And we, this piece needs to be on there for this to do correctly. Mm -hmm. right. And the reason it needs to be on there is that when this is sucked down, you see how it just doesn't jump up when I let go? Yeah. Well, it actually holds this closed like this. And when you nail the throttle, the vacuum goes away on our little port here, and it allows this thing to come out. When it allows that to come out, that allows this to open. Well, if this thing just goes boom, like that, it could cause a hesitation. So they have this little tiny hole here to slow down the opening to eliminate a hesitation. Now, there's a little spring over here that can be adjusted. And you can help it there. But that's not the correct one to use. That one is there just to close this. But you can tighten it up and make it a little better and have it a little more effective. All right.
Okay. Now the way you test these is you push it in, you put your finger over it, then you pull your finger away. So we know that one's good. And it has a little 5 16 instead of a screwdriver, it has this little bolt thingy. And that's so that it can be installed after you put the top on. But if we would have remembered to put it on first, I would have. Okay, so there's, that's the linkage there. Now you see when it's down like this, this can't open. Mm -hmm. But as soon as it, and so when you're cruising, driving down the road, the vacuum's high, so it keeps it here. Mm -hmm. As soon as you nail the throttle, it does that. And that allows for your secondaries to open. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, this also does another job. Mm-hmm. It when the choke is set, and I'll we'll hook it up here in a second. When the choke is set, as soon as the engine starts, it pulls like this, and it tips open the choke. So it's also a choke pull off. It does two jobs. It pulls off the choke and it holds the secondaries to eliminate hesitation when you open the secondary up. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, what we're going to do first though is we're going to put our power valve together. Now, this power valve, sometimes these get loose and you have to just gently squish this thing so that it's not loose. Now, it has your metering rods. That go in here mm -hmm. and those are a certain size and they're used for tuning this carburetor if you get a skinnier rod it goes richer if you get a fatter rod it goes leaner. leaner but you can change how fat it is here and here so that you have the right mixture at a cruise and the right mixture at wide open throttle you can have both worlds on this one little guy now if both are too lean your cruise is lean and your wide open is lean, then you change the jet down inside the carburetor. But if only one is lean and one is rich, then you change this. You have to be able to feed it down. Let's see if the camera can see down here. You see that hole down there? Let's see. Oh, wait. Yeah, the camera can barely there, There's see a hole that right one. there. See that? It's just not real bright today. Yeah. That's what this goes through, and it goes down into the jet. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we got to put this thing together. You just go ahead and keep the camera there. And make sure you get your spring in there, and you just let this thing drop down. Now, there's a dimple in on this. Mm -hmm. And that dimple goes up against here. Okay? See that? Mm -hmm. All right, so now what you got to do is you stick this through the hole. And then you stick it through our little T like that. And we do the same thing with this side. And stick it through our little T. Oops, I didn't get it. Oh, come on. There we go. All right. Now, then you push it down. Oh, see, I lost this one. See how I lost it? Yep. And that's why this kind of gets to be difficult sometimes, is you got to... Well, keep an eye on the other one, and the other one falls out, and then <laughs> yeah. you're fixing the other one, and you're like, oh, crap, the other one fell out. Yeah. It's kind of like a, my game. When you're right. trying to get the wheels on the tracks, the, when you get the first set of wheels on the tracks, the other wheels are off, then you put those on, and then the other wheels are off because you picked it off the tracks. <laughs> okay. I hate when that happens. So then you got to wiggle it around, then you got to make sure it goes all the way in. You see that? Yep. If it doesn't go all the way in, then you're not in the jet. So you got to make sure it goes all the way in. Now, then there's this little cap, and it has a dimple. That dimple goes to this hole right here. So you line up that dimple, and then you got your little screw that's going to go in there. And here's our little screw. All right. Now 
Now you see this little hole? Mm -hmm. Right in the middle of this, see that long rod that's stuck down that mm -hmm. touches our little cam? Mm -hmm. Okay, that long rod is adjustable and you can make it longer or shorter. If you make it longer, the carburetor gets richer on both primary and, I mean, on at cruise and wide open. Okay, on the primary side. Mm -hmm. So you can adjust that to get your carburetor richer if you need to. Then you have this little cover. This little cover is all it is, just a little cover. <laughs> and it goes down in here, and you just gotta be careful not to lock, knock your screw off and drop it and do all that. Okay, you just have to make sure that that works good, and yep. it does. And you can see our, our metering rods are attached. Can you see them? Yep. There and there. Okay, now we've got our choke to work on here a little bit, and we'll get those pieces on. All right, accelerator pump linkage, choke pull off, secondary, there's fast idle. Looks like we got everything on here. Okay, check this out, people. This is the power valve, and you can see it operate when I move the throttle because it has a direct piece of linkage on it in addition to a spring. That's a good thing. Right, now, let's go ahead and put our screws in here. We'll tighten all this down, and then we'll go find ourselves a ram charger to go put a carburetor in. Sound good to you? Yeah. Holly 600. Holly 600. Huh. Back in secondary. Sweet. What's that orange stuff inside the. Is that rust? What's that? Orange stuff in there. Orange stuff in here? Yeah. I don't see any orange stuff. Huh. Okay. Okay. Oh. Big dirt dollar nest on the bottom of it. <laughs> Look at that nasty stuff. That's what I was talking about. It's in there too. Varnish. That's Varnish. From, that's from old gas. Oh. From when it was sitting all those years, not going anywhere. Yeah. All right, now we need to uh, take this adapter plate off. So this is the factory manifold. Mm -hmm. The factory manifold was originally a spread board. Uh-huh. So they had to put this adapter plate on there because this carburetor, uh, that poly is a square bit. Yeah. Alex. our old adapter plate. Ooh. Let's go ahead and get started with that. <laughs> Thermo quad. Yep. Now this is the proper carburetor for this engine. This is this the number matches the 400. So it's not the original carburetor to this vehicle, but it is what it is. All right. Now 
here's what I do to start something carburetor for the first time. Uh -huh. Now, there are some YouTube guys out there that claim they invented this. Mm -hmm. Well, I learned this from my auto shop teacher, and I graduated 100 years ago. So, I don't know where they learned it. I learned it from my auto shop teacher. You take your vent. Mm -hmm. You take your little squirt bottle. And you give it a squeeze. And that fills up your float bowls. Alright. We'll add a little extra in here. If it hurts. Okay. So, so we've already got these adjusted right. to three turns out um, our accelerator pump our, our choke is not connected up this particular choke uses a heat element which we don't have hooked up the wiring harness isn't I, I don't know where it's at we'll find it so let's go ahead and see if we can make this thing go see if we can make this thing roar all right, it's now, why don't you go ahead, I'll hold the camera. You go ahead and go in there and crank it over. All right, then. Make sure it's in park. Door needs to hold up. Ooh. Roll the window down so I can talk with you. Now, I'll go ahead and hit the throttle first. We'll get it up and operating and that kind of thing. And Forget it. <laughs> Just leave the door open. Okay. <laughs> That's part of restoring a vehicle. All those things need to be disassembled, lubed, that kind of stuff. So.
starts right up. All right, Jacob. Well, I think that's so far successful. Now, there's not, we could do some super tuning, I guess, to this engine. The camshaft's the biggest thing that changes the way a carburetor operates, obviously. Cubic inches and compression ratios can affect it too. And some porting will definitely affect it. But what we're going to do is we're going to leave this alone the way it is. We'll get the exhaust put on it. Uh, we'll drive it around a little bit. And then we're going to pull the engine out and, uh, and start the rebuild on it. Sweet. All right. Well... I think it's time to call this one good for now. I wanted to go a little further with it, but this is good for now. And uh, I'm happy. You happy? Sure am. Happy with it. Yep. Well, uh, let's call this one a video. All right. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. And subscribing. Yep, get her done. Sweet. Like the video, too. Yeah, by the way. Thermobog. 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 Look at that cheap plastic. Cheap plastic. Now this engine is hot or warm. Yeah. That plastic is frozen cold. Thermo. Thermo. Four barrel. Four barrel thermo quad. Good job. So. All right. Cut her off. All right. See ya.